In today's video, I will be sharing with you a dozen one-of-a-kind porch decor DIYs. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Y'all, this is a compilation video, so it's a big one. Get you something nice to drink, get your cozy slippers on, and sit back and relax. Thanks! So this is a potato bag that my husband brought to me that he got when he went to buy seed potatoes for our garden. So he brought this home, thought I might could do something with it, and of course, I kept it. These are some cotton stems. And I also have some thrifted flowers. And this, I think this is like a wooden, really lightweight, uh, big plate or platter. I'm going to spray that W in the middle with some satin paint. Of course, I didn't have to do that. You'll see why shortly. Also, you can use these little picks if you would like, instead of using the big ones, and you can see they're very similar. I think you can get some cotton picks also at the Dollar Tree if you want to look for those. So just like with any other floral, if you want to be sure that you fluff it out, bend it back and forth, move it around. Nothing grows straight up and bunched together, I don't think, but maybe grapes. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how I want to place this. I'm going to go inside the edge. It's only stitched on the bottom and on one side, and I'm just going to clip it and pull that thread, and it's going to open the whole thing. I think that dog food bags, most of them have the same type of a, of a seam. You just clip one section and it pulls right out. So I'm trying to decide which piece I want to go along here and trim it up. And I learned a little trick, and this is something that I got from Crafting Cousins. To get a straight line in your burlap, pick a piece and just pull it, and it will make you a nice straight line. Look at that. Now I have a guide to cut all the way down. So thanks for that tip, girls. Just going to go right along there. You can pretty much use the same process here on this top. I want to make this kind of even. It doesn't really matter in the end, but I felt like I needed to clean it up a bit. Makes it easier to handle. So I'm just getting a straight line there also. And then trimming up where it's a little bit longer on the top. If you don't have a potato bag, you can use an onion bag you can use um, you could probably use a pillowcase if you had one or you can just use a piece of burlap that's not in a bag but I like the the print on this so I wanted to be sure to use it and it's perfect for this time of year when everybody's using patriotic themes on their porches and in their house I think this is a really good um, use for summer decor so this is not metal as I've said it's some type of wood or something. I'm just going to hot glue right to the back and it will stay perfectly fine here. Just going to fold it over and I know you can't see the bottom. I apologize but it's the same process as I'm doing on the sides. Just fold it up and glue it down. Fold it over and glue it down. Now I'm not going all the way up because I'm going to do a little something different with the top. So I'm just going to go up maybe a few inches from the top is where I'll stop. Don't worry about the mess. We'll fix that later. Okay, so this is how much I have on here. And now you can see why it didn't matter that that W was on there. Because you can't see it now at this point anyway. So now I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to press it down. And then get in between the layers also so it will stay flat. Now I've tried to make a point to use quite a bit of glue to hold this down because I will be stuffing it and putting some pressure on it. I don't want it to fall apart and I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks. But you use whatever you have. If you're putting it outside, just be aware that hot glue will release sometimes in a lot of sunlight and heat. So just keep that in mind. You might want to keep it inside. Now just to keep that folded, I put a little extra glue underneath. Now I'm going to take the other half of the bag and use that for my stuffing. I have old pillow stuffing here. You just rip apart those old pillows that are beat to death. I'm just folding it up. No particular way. 
making a little pouch and stuffing it on the inside. Just stuffing my strings down and all the little cotton fluff so that it's on the inside. So see there? It gives it a little bit of fluffiness to appear that it is full of something. We want it to appear that it is full of cotton and florals. These came on a long stem so they very easily go down in here. Oh, I might add these particular cotton stems came from Amazon. My husband ordered them uh, as well as a hand sander for me. So, does he know me or what? That was my Mother's Day gift. Okay, so I'm going to take these little flowers. They look like, almost look like African violets to me, except they're red and white. Do they come in any other color besides violet? Let me know in the comments below because I'm not sure, but that's what they look like to me. And I'm just going to put the white in the middle because I only have one of those. They all tuck pretty nicely into the bag that is underneath, so I didn't use any foil foam or anything like that to hold it in. They, they tuck nicely into there, and I got the top folded over and tight enough that it kind of holds it in place. So again, I'm just fluffing out the pieces that I mashed up. Now look what I'm going to do with all of the pieces. Talking about using every bit of your items in a project. Look at this. This is the scraps that I pulled out when I was making my edges. And I'm just going to tie a little knot there in the middle. And then you can cut free all the little loops. See how there's some loops in there? Those can be cut. You can uh, trim those up if you want to, or you could leave them hanging at different lengths. I kind of like the choppy, rustic look of this. And of course, you know me, I've got to fluff it and put it in a thousand places till I see what looks right to me. So then I decided I had a little bit left from the bottom of the bag because all we use so far right is the front and the back. Now I've got the bottom section here. I'm going to tear some of that off. It's got some of that red from the word in it and I'm going to tie a simple bow in it. If I can get it to behave itself. It took a minute there. Okay, there we go. So pull that out and fluff out that bow. And then I think I like it just like that. Look at that little messy bow. Isn't that perfect? And I just used my scraps for that. Then I'm just going to add that bow to the top of the knotted section and clamp it down so it has a nice good hold. Now I'm going to take a few of those single picks and just place those around where it looks like they need to be. A little bit of hot glue to stick it down. And what's great about this particular, I guess, piece of decor here is that it can be changed out. Since we didn't glue anything but a couple of little pieces down, maybe that one or two pieces of cotton stems, you can use this for something else. Put a different arrangement in it. So these, all these little picks here are on pieces of wire, so you can cut them off and some of them are just held on there by the uh, tape, like a floral tape. You can just pull them straight out and then you can use them in other sections. So don't be afraid to kind of manipulate the flowers and stuff and um, yeah, get them where you like them. Get them to where it feels right. And you know, with rustic, I want it to look like it's more natural, a more of a natural look and I think that rustic and cottage core fit right into that that natural rugged rustic kind of pretty look now I decided that it needed some more greenery in it and some more height so I'm just taking some more of these thrifted pieces that look like pretty much just look like weeds they got some type of a berry in them I'm gonna add those down in there and I gotta tell you guys this reminds me of Louisiana I am in Alabama now, so I'm an Alabama girl, but most of my life was spent in Louisiana and in Mississippi, and we had lots of cotton fields all around and wildflowers, and this is just, this makes my heart happy. Just like my magnolia wreath that I did, I can look at this and I have so many warm memories and I love it. Okay, so now we're gonna make a hanger, and I'm just gonna turn this over and it, nothing's falling out. You can see nothing's falling out. Just be gentle. And I'm going to make a hanger for the back. 
So I'm just using a scrap piece that I got off of some other project that I did. I have a bucket that I keep my little scraps in that are big enough to use for, you know, multi-purpose. So I'm just making the simple loop for the back and then just putting some hot glue and a piece of paper over that. You can pull your tags off, you can paint the back if it bothers you. You can use some felt or some paper on the back to cover it all up if you want to do that. I'm going to show this to you on my door, but this is actually going to be in the inside of my house. So no one is going to see the back of this piece. Here it is hanging on the door. So if you wanted to have it outside, this is how it would look. I love how it looks with the natural wood on our cabin house. Very pretty. Is this something that you would try? I know I had comments from my Magnolia and my um, summertime, another summertime video that a lot of people are from the South. So I have a lot of Southern folk in my subscriber family. Is this something that you would try? Project number two is a strainer planter. I got this design from a Louisiana girl. Her name is Julie from Julie's Designs and Signs or Signs and Designs. I'll put her link below because I'm giving her all credit for this idea. I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, I already have the pieces to do this at my house. So everything you see is thrifted except for the paint, which is the, um, it's an antique wax. Even my DeWalt drill is thrifted, y'all. Seriously, I paid $5 for the DeWalt drill. Yeah, and two chargers, and it works. It's perfect. Okay, so this is so easy. Don't be intimidated by power tools, ladies. If, you, if you've never used a power tool, don't be intimidated. This is so easy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of that antique wax in the bowl that I always use for my antiques wax, as you can see there, and just a little bit of water. And I'm gonna make a bit of a wash for this. So I'm gonna get it, it's gonna be kinda of runny and messy. I'm gonna use this chip book brush and tap a little bit off so I don't go completely nuts with it. And then it's just gonna run everywhere. You see it on the table there? We don't care. I don't want it to be completely dark. I want this to just look aged and I want it to look, you know, a little bit darker. A little bit of a richer color for my rustic cottagey farmhouse. I don't even know what my style is anymore. All I do know for sure, for certain, is that I love warm, earthy tones and I love a comfortable house. So how's that? Now I'm going to do all three of these the same way. I'm even using my little, do you see that's a chopping mat? that I used to paint on and you can get those at Dollar Tree and they're in a two pack so be sure you go pick one of those up and then they're easy to, to wash off in the sink and uh, glue pretty much peels off of them too. That is so easy and it really doesn't take long when you do it this way for the stain to dry so pretty much we made a, a stain. Alright so this is a strainer of sorts and you see it's kind of bent and not exactly flat on the bottom. If yours is this way, just go ahead and press that down. This is metal and it's kind of easy to maneuver. So just press your bottom a little bit flatter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, rustic. It's not, we're not trying to achieve perfection here. We just want it to look like it's aged and look like it's been used before. There I go with my whole arm in there again. Okay, in the bottom of this, there are six little marks that do not have holes. This makes it so simple for me to go in and figure out where I'm going to put my legs. So I'm just going to use my paint marker that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love for so many reasons. I'm going to mark these. Take my drill. Now the drill bit is the same size as my screw, and that's important to know because you're going to put a screw through the hole you want it to fit. So just be sure that you know what screws you're using so you can do that. Also drilling down and then using reverse to drill back out of the hole. Okay, these are dry. Now I'm just going to drill into here. Pre-drilling these ho holes will make it easier for the screws to go in. And it, you have to hold this in such an awkward way, or at least I haven't figured out an easier way to do it. So you want to give yourself a break. I'm fairly new 
to power tools uh, as you could probably see here so I'm just looking for the hole and there it is you can see the dark mark where I had it and I'm just starting to screw off just a little bit I'm gonna put that little leg on there and then screw it down see there look at that so you know where I'm going with this okay now I'm tightening them up to make sure that they stay you're also going to want to use something to seal that if you're going to have it you know on an area where it's not under a covered porch and I have a covered porch so I'm not gonna to have to worry about it but I still did use a sealer on the legs and around the screw holes and it's a planter Julie you're a genius I know you probably won't see my videos because you have a really big channel but you are so awesome I love this idea and I plan on making more I see these things at Goodwill all the time even the little legs came from Goodwill these fern picks they came from Goodwill these things look so real so what do you think about these projects and please tell me you're gonna try at it least is one. one of two that I have that I thrifted and I'm going to use magnolias they're one of my favorite flowers and I have two of these trees in my yard these are some foes that I got from Goodwill I also have some burlap strips two different thicknesses and two different colors one's a little more sheer than the other and then I just have some tool that is white I'm going to be using some floral wire you could also use uh, the little pipe cleaners or Chanel stands if you would like but first I'm gonna get the dust off of these flowers just using a little paintbrush to do that I'm going to fix the florals on their picks and stems just kind of twisting those leaves around a bit and I'm gonna start laying them out how I would like for them to show up this is a good arrangement to do if you have a glass door that you want to put it on because you can see the other side is going to just be the basket and you won't have a mess back there like you do with some wreaths and floral arrangements that you might want to put up I'm just going to add these picks where I feel like they look right I move my things around quite a bit and remember if you have florals that are fake or silk you can always bend the wires to have them in the direction that you would like for them to face I'm going to use some of this floral wire to make little picks and ties I'm just gonna fold it over like a hairpin push it through the that open mesh in the back and then twist it and it'll hold it in place I'm gonna do the same thing with the greenery you can stack them together and wrap them around and this is what it's gonna look like and always go back in with some hot glue and a little spare greenery and put that around wherever you would like if you see spots that need a little more filling but I think this looks pretty good everything seems to be happy where it's at just gonna pull a few things out and now we're gonna work on our bow I am going to use 16 inches of this open mesh and then the one that's a little bit more closely woven I'm gonna do the same thing here cut that off and then I'm just going to cut about the same amount of the tool that's hard to see against this background now this bow is going to be super easy protect your fingers I didn't do that here but I was very careful how I was holding it you're going to fold those over on themselves right there on the edges and press it down put it aside so it can cool and we're going to do the same thing with this one we're going to wrap that one over a little bit more so it makes the loop a little smaller so see there you have a little extra in the back it's a little shorter on the second layer and then i'm just folding this last one up no rhyme or reason to that now I'm going to press this bow, pinch it, and then press it together in the middle. I'm going to take some jute cord, and I'm just going to tie that in a couple of knots to hold that bow together. You can use 
a twist tie for this if you want, or you can use zip ties, floral wire, whatever you have. I'm trying to go through some of the supplies that I have now. And jute is what I happen to have a little extra of. So these are just pretty much scraps that I have left. And I'm going to trim these down to make the tails. I'm using 12 inches of each of these. I'm going to cut those after I stack them right down the middle. And then I'm going to trim off the stitched area because I want to have a rough edge on this. I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to set it aside because it will be used in another project. Same thing on this one. And then you can just start pulling the loose threads off to give it a little frayed edge on both sides. Now going to the darker ribbon, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it and then just start pulling some of the edges loose from that. You can see they come off very easily. Now I'm going to stack them with the darker color in the back and a lighter color on top, just like I did with the bow. You can go trim up anything that's sticking out or that doesn't look right. And I'm going to put these together. So there's a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue there, and we have the tails for the bow. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to put some glue on the top of that and place the bow that we've already made right in the center. So fluff the bow just a little bit, get an idea of what it's going to look like when we're getting ready to use it, and give that glue some time to dry. And this is what our bow is going to look like. So we have to have a way to attach it, and I'm going to do the same thing with the wire that I did before. I'm just going to make a loop like a hairpin, stick it through there, and then I'm going to put it right above where I already have a hanger. Once it's secured, I'm going to use a couple of dots of glue to give my ribbon tails a little bit of movement. Just going to put a dot of glue there because I'll be repurposing this um, form at another time. Just a couple of little dots of glue to hold it in place and then you can also do the same thing on the other side and put it in your floral section if you'd like. Now I'm going to just make the extra little tail part with the tool, tuck it underneath, and then there you go. So this is project one and this is a wreath for my door. This is my front door and it is all glass. And here's my beautiful magnolia arrangement. I'm going to be using some of these decorative balls. These are um, different types of almost, I want to say wooden and also vine. I'm going to use a five inch wreath and one of the bigger um, orbs here. It has wire on the inside, like a wire frame or a metal frame. I'm going to do what we what's going to be my bottom right now is what I'm attaching to it this is like my base and I'm going to attach this in four sections and leave a little bit of my pipe cleaners there leave a little bit of length like an inch probably on each section and I'm just going to go into quarters and do one on each quarter all you have to do is kind of bend a little loop to make it thread through easier then I'm going to do the same thing right in the center of of that section right on the bottom. Next I'm going to use some jute cord. I've got about 16 inches but you can vary the lengths and you're going to tie off each of these orbs. Do a couple of knots so that it is nice and secure and be sure that you tie it on a piece that is actually attached and not loose because sometimes they will be loose. Now I flip this over and on the center top what's going to be our top I have just fed a little bit of that jute through there and I'm going to do a little knot so that I have a hanger right there on the top. So there you go. This is going to hang 
Now we're going to flip it back over to the bottom. I'm going to undo the twist tie just a tad and start adding the ropes with the smaller orbs on it. I'm going to twist that in and then I'm going to trim off the little extra because I don't need the extra anymore. Do the same thing with each of the other sections. You want to vary your length, but since we're not cutting it or tying it down, twisting it up in this will allow you to, to look at it and make adjustments. Make it higher, make it lower, however you want to do these, because you do want these to be hanging at different levels. And this way you can pull that jute back and forth through the loops that you have in that Chanel stem. So next I'm going to start pulling off some greenery that I have. Just pulling off all these little segments. These are all thrifted. Every bit of this is thrifted, except for the jute. And I'm just going to start adding these in where that big orb meets the little wreath that's underneath it. So there's a little, little space there, and I'm going to put these pieces. I don't know what kind of greenery this is, but I like it. It's very airy. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. Then I'm going to add some to the top of each one of the smaller orbs. I'm going to add two, one on either side of each of the smaller orbs. It's very easy to do. A little hot glue will hold it in there. You can use a different type of adhesive if you were going to have this outside in a windy place. Um, you know, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to take little strips of jute and I'm going to tie bows in the top over the knot on each one of these. That's going to give it a little added security because it is right underneath the knot. Sorry, I'm out of the out of your sight right there for a moment. And then I'm going to take three strips of 10 inches and I'm going to tie a couple of little stacked bows in the center. I just want to remind you of the rules you can find it in the first card of this video and in the description box, but I also want to let you know that it is a hop, so that means you have to watch each of all the eight videos, and in the description boxes of each video, there's going to be a link that will send you to the next video. You need to leave a comment on each one that you watch, each of the eight, and this is going to give you a chance to win $80. Here you follow all of those rules, and good luck. Now, after the bows are tied, I'm just going to go up and add four or five pieces of that same greenery to the top. Here it is completed. A little piece of porch decor. I think it's gorgeous. What do you think? And this is a little bonus project, really. Very simple. I'm just using some cans in two different sizes. That's greens and some black eyed peas came in because I live in the South. I'm just going to use some extra scraps and bits that I had left. I pulled off the edges to make them rough. I'm going to hot glue them down the seam there. I'm going to use the other one to do the other can. I'm just going to trim it down, take the edges off, fray it out a bit, and add it to the larger can. These cans could be used for artificial um, candles. It could be like the flameless candles, or you could use greenery. You could put flowers in them. You could put shells in them, whatever you want to do. You can make this your own what my channel is all about. Just glue that down and remember those scraps trim that I had? Well, there we go. I'm going to use one here. I'm going to take some of that greenery. It's a little bit different. The color is a little bit different on these. This might actually be eucalyptus. Just going to adjust it a bit. Then I'm going to tie it off. There you go, that one's done. Now I have this from a project that I did earlier. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, but it is burlap. 
gonna take a little finger full of that same greenery, put it down, tie it nicely, and I'm gonna trim that off. So we don't need anything to help catch the wind and take it off the porch. And this is what they're gonna look like. Nice. If you wanna add greenery like I did, this is what you do. I'm keeping it simple with some neutral colors here, but you can do whatever you would like for yours. I'm not even using any foam. I'm just using what I have, making this super simple for this last project. Cutting these in different lengths, not even cutting the flowers. I'm just folding them over and poking them down in there. Adding some more, added some more pieces. Thanks for watching. We're going to run to Dollar Tree and get a metal wreath ring. This is not the largest, but like the medium size one. I have five of these globes. You can do five or six. They're the solar crackle lights. Be sure you check and make sure everything's working. Here they are. I'm going to use some florist wire, a garland of some sort, or you can use loose greenery. And then I thrifted this big bag of this rope. And actually, I think it ended up in two bags. It's a lot of it. So we're going to pick our placement for where we want our lights to hang. And they're going to be hanging from this wreath. So if you use five, you just kind of kind of have to eyeball where you want to put them because they're not going to be evenly spaced around the wreath. Use six, and then you can hang one at each of those crossbars. So just make it easier on yourself and do six. I have cut some little pieces of that wire just a couple of inches long to help us get these wrapped in place. You can pop these hangers right off of your globes. See, it works. Be sure that it works. It's got a little on and off switch in there. No tab to pull out, so no tabs on these. All right, so this is going to hang from its hanger attached to the wreath and it's going to attach to the underneath side of the wreath. That's where it's gonna hang down. I have chosen to put mine on the crossbar here uh, on the second from the inside. Using this florist wire is going to make sure that it doesn't slide back and forth and that everything is nice and secure because if we put this outside on the porch, we want it to hold up to the wind, right? show you one more time and now if you have an odd number rather than an even number and you do this you can still put it on the wreath you can put as many you can just do three if you wanted to it's totally up to you but I am going to the main thing for me is to get them spaced evenly just like if you had a chandelier in your house you would want those lights spaced evenly that's how they make them so now once you know that everything's where it should be you can take the ends of the wire that you didn't wrap around the hanger and wrap those around the wreath. That's gonna give it a little grip, almost like its hands are out to the side and hold it on. So that's gonna help hold it in place. Get your tools if you need to, protect your fingers because these florist wires can, can poke you. I've definitely had little pokes in my fingers from them. So once you get all those lights on, you can get your rope ready. Now, if you don't have this type of rope, just go ahead and use whatever type of rope you have. If you don't have rope, you can use like a burlap ribbon, would probably give about the same effect. And you can get those at Dollar Tree almost any time. Alright, so I'm going to start off by tying this right on the inner two sections. I'm just going to tie a knot. You can double it if you want to, but you can use a little glue also to hold it in place. Turn that so that the frayed end or the loose end is inside of the wreath form. We don't want that on sticking on the outside where everybody can see it. So we're going to sort of disguise it. We're going to wrap this around and it is going to give it a little more security to the hangers that these lights are on to keep them from sliding around as well. Not to mention it gives it a very pretty rustic look for outside. I've mentioned before if you've been here before you know this but for those of you who are new to the channel or just stopping by we live in a, it's like a log cabin, and we live by the lake. 
and we have big oak trees in the yard and magnolia trees. It's just really beautiful out here. And I like to try to go with my natural surroundings for my decor, my personal decor. But you can always customize this to make it your own, any way that you like it. And you can also customize this for seasons or holidays, just depending. We're going to make it easy for you to change this up. So it's something that you can use more than once. Maybe you could just keep it on your porch forever or until your little solar lights croak. How about that? We're going to continue to go around here. And I want you to see how, you see how I've pushed that toward the inside? It's almost like we're jumping that. We're going to jump it so that it holds it in place. And then we're going to continue around and we'll do each section like that. If you have a shorter rope or just in segments like I have, you can just take a little bit of hot glue when you get to the end. Make sure it's on a side where you can't see it. So maybe on the underneath side or all the way to the outside where the garland is going to be covering that up. So that's what I did. I put it out toward the outside where the garland will be covering it. You start again where you left off. Take a little bit of that rope, put it to the inside glue it down and then continue along with your twisting. Now there are going to be some sections that you see here in us twisting this rope where there's some open spaces you can see toward the outside because the diameter is bigger on the outside than the inside, right? It's a circle. But we're not going to worry about that because that's going to be closed in shortly. Grab your greenery or your garland. I say garland is the easiest one for me, I knew I wanted to use it for this, but it's a little easier because it's already put together for you. But you can do this in little segments with uh, just plain greenery. So if you grab some fern greenery, say you like this look, get it at Dollar Tree because they do have some. And then you can just wire your picks on there or tie your picks on. If we use the jute, it's going to help fill in the wreath. It's going to blend in seamlessly and you won't even notice it. It has a really pretty uh, aged country effect, you know. I really like it. So just going to continue around, double knots. Trim off what you don't need. You're not going to see what's under there because you're going to cut it off short enough and you're not going to see it. What you're seeing now is the top of the wreath, which is the part that will be facing the ceiling. That's the part we're working on now. So the greenery that I'm using I've decided to keep that garland sort of running down the side so that it will spray or hang over the inside and the outside. Back to the beginning of where we started and I didn't want to pile that on top of the other and just continue around because it's not enough to make it evenly thick. I hope that makes sense to you. It would be one section really really thick and then the rest of it would look like something was missing. So I chose to cut that section off and use those little free pieces to fill in any place that looks like it might need a little something extra. Now this is really easy to just pop off the pieces that come off and then grab a little bit of hot glue and tack down your free pieces of fern wherever you feel that they look best. And I just kind of spin it around, look at all directions anytime you're using greenery or doing any projects really. You want to look at it from all angles to make sure you haven't missed anything. So I'm fluffing this out, making this greenery nice and thick and pretty and make sure the pretty side is up. We don't want anybody, you know, saying, yeah, that's definitely fake fern. We want it to, you know, give them, give them a second look, make them look twice, make them wonder, right? You can do that with good quality greenery. But mine was thrifted, so I have no idea where this came from. But I bet you could find something at Timu, not sponsored, and, you know, at the Dollar Tree, something like that. Maybe in clearance sales. You might even find something at Hobby Lobby that's like spring clearance or summer clearance, since they're always so far ahead. I'm going to take three two-foot strands of this same rope that we used before. Three is going to make our hanger for the top. If you want to do even numbers, you can certainly do even numbers, but I think three will suffice for this. I want to stretch our dollar, so I'm trying to save as many project pieces as I can. Save as much money on each one as I can. So you can see here where it will naturally open so that you can tie to the side because we have that little gaps, those little gaps in the string that are toward the outside. We're going to use that to our advantage. I'm going to go to the second loop from the outside, not the inside, but the outside, tie a little knot, flip the little free 
end right there. It's going to go on the inside. And then I'm going to glue the knot. And I am going to glue, I am having the worst trouble with glue guns right now, y'all. I'm just, I can't. You're probably going to see a bunch of different glue guns in the next few videos because they're giving me fits. So you're going to just glue that in there too. It's going to keep your knot secure. This is not heavy anyway. If you choose to use a heavier or bigger rope, then it will be. So just keep in mind, you know, once you put your lights on, that's going to give it a little weight too. You don't want to put anything on here that is going to fall apart or slip. Same process. Go on to the second one from the outside. Tying that in that little gap. It's going to help close that gap. You can glue on either side of the knot, which will also close the gap. And you can glue into the knot. And we're going to have the three sections, sort of if you imagined a triangle or an upside down triangle, depending on how you have this positioned on your table while you're crafting. So just you have three points to hold this beautiful piece up. Again, I cannot stress enough how you should check your lights when you're doing projects before you use them. Now, side note, but it is about this. I bought these five. I got them all home. I tried them all in the store. Tried them all when I got home. Everything worked great. Got ready to do my finished product um, in the video and realized that one of the lights was refusing to work. It would flash when you turned it on, but then it wouldn't work. So, yeah, keep that in mind. But you can always return things to Dollar Tree when they don't behave themselves, which is what I will most likely do. So, I have these beads. They're white beads. I don't want the white on here because I'm not going for a farmhouse look. So, I want this to look more aged, antiqued, or, you know, country, rustic looking. Folksy, if you want to, to say it that way. So, the glued side was glued onto a tiered tray that I took apart that was broken. And the other side is slick. So, we want the pretty side up. And we're going to use these beautiful beads now that we have distressed them and made them look nice and aged. Very nice. So easy to do with that antiquing wax. And a wet baby wipe, perfect. All right, so we're going to put these three ends together and lift them up. Now, I'm looking to make sure that everything is level to the eye. You know, I'm not using a level here, but you could. To make sure everything is level, so I know how long those rope pieces need to be. And I'm going to keep holding them at the right level. Add some cool glue. Not the hot. You'll burn yourself up cool but please protect your fingers don't don't do as I do just do it as I say but very easily you can twist that end with the cool temp glue with your fingers and then feed those beads right down there on there now these beads were thrifted because they came off of a tiered tray that I had worked on so I'm not sure where they came from but you can pretty much find beads anywhere now because they're so popular in decor and in crafting projects so I've just slid those three down pretty side up and when I get them the right height that I like them, and I just guessed, I didn't measure, I just, you know, decided where I wanted it. Push the beads down, they're not glued on, so at this point you can slide them around. And then I realized that the end of this will fit right back into there, making a beautiful triple loop on the top. How about that? And then once you super glue that or hot glue it in place, it is not going to move and it will stay for you for a long time. Now. Assuming you're using Gorilla Glue, if it's going to be outside and super glue, that's what's going to give it longevity. Otherwise, you use a cheap glue and it's going to release and your lights are going to fall and probably break. So just be super careful with this. And if you don't like this type of hanger, just go on and put on there whatever you want to. It's pretty easy to change things up. So now I'm going to put these lights on here. I'm going to put them right back on their little hooks or their hangers and get them ready for the reveal. I'm just, they just snap on y'all really. They just snap right back in. If they seem like they're getting a little bit loose before you put them in, give them a squeeze and then open them and put them onto there and that'll hold. Okay, place. so y'all, this piece I got from Goodwill. Another lady that I have befriended there found it. She was going to get it and take it home, but it really did need some TLC. And she asked me, did I want it? And I told her, yes, I would love to have it. So I've had it for a while and it's, it's very functional, but I don't like the look of it. I don't like that orangey looking finish and the 
the painting. I mean, somebody did a beautiful job on it, but it just really doesn't fit my home decor. So I want to make it look a little more rustic, a little more woodsy, cottagey, so that it will fit into my home. And that is so easy to do. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And by the way, did you watch that entire advertisement about the cruise getaway? I would love, love, love to meet you guys. You can come and visit and craft with me and hang out after we craft and ask questions. And we're going to have a blast. So time is limited. Run over there and get yourself straight. Get yourself ready to go with us and meet us. You see how this table folds? You can just take it around and just take it around your house. I hope I find a million more of these because they are beautiful and they're so nice to flip. So nice. After I have sanded with my sander outside, this is how it looks. There are some pieces on here you can see where I didn't get every single bit of that varnish or stain or whatever that orange looking finish was. I didn't get it all off so I'm we're going to work with that because I want it to look old and distressed on the legs anyway. And I think I do accomplish that. So be sure y'all stick around to the end of the video when you see the, the final reveal. You can see what I have um, going on with this table and the changes that have been made. All right. All sanded. Now I've got it on my table. You can use a sticky cloth for this to get off all of your dust or you can just use... A dry towel or a damp towel, I like to use a slightly damp microfiber cloth to get all of the dust and shavings and paint particles and all that off there. We're going to start with a very nice clean surface because on the top we're going to be painting that and I don't want anything to muddy up that paint. Now, be sure when you're sanding and cleaning that you're getting the entire surface, the back, the outside, the edges, the inside, the underneath. The bottom of the feet, do it all. All right, so it's been wiped, it is dry, and now I'm gonna use this wood tint. This is a very dark color. Very pretty, and it's gonna be perfect for what I want. I'm using a sponge brush. We're not gonna do anything with the top. We're gonna do everything but the top. So with this, it is a very quick drying tint. It is. It does what a stain does essentially, but it doesn't have the odor and it dries very quickly. So I'm making sure that I paint all the surfaces. I'm trying to move quickly, wiping this on, and then, and you need to use long streaks when you do it because if you don't wipe it fast enough, you're going to have little white marks in there. I suppose you would if you used some type of a stain also, but I'm making sure I try to get it even and then I'll just take a rag, a clean rag, of course, or clean paper towels, and wipe off the excess. It's gonna settle into the sanded areas. You can see on the edges there, it's gonna be darker on the edges, around the nails. I think this is gorgeous. If you don't want the nail pieces showing, you could obviously cover that up with paint or, you know, you can work your magic with some spackle or something like that. But I don't mind the hardware showing in this um, at all. You could also do like a rust, like a faux rust finish on the nails if you wanted to. But I'm not worried about that. We're not going to get too complicated on this, right? Because the process of painting and staining may not take a lot of time, but the dry time is what really makes a difference. So be sure, like you can see here, I'm gonna get all over the sides. I will open the table up and get down all of the legs. You know, I'm not gonna make you obviously watch that whole process, but just know that I do that. Every single bit of it. You can flip it up on the, the table top since we're not painting that, and you can do that. But you can see here the difference already in the color of the wood from that rich, rich, dark, that I'm putting on there is to that orangey color that I had on there. And y'all, I'm almost out of foam brushes. I've got to order foam brushes. I've got to order sanders, chippy brushes. I got to get prepared because y'all know Halloween and this last quarter of the year that is coming up after the 4th of July, I am going to be 
doing some crafting because it's my favorite time of year. Our subscriber giveaway is in November every year. So y'all be sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss those giveaways. I mean, I really like to spoil people. So you will have a package full of all kinds of goodies. There may be thrift, I mean, uh, thrift pieces. There may be new pieces that I bought. Could be Dollar Tree, could be Timu, could be Amazon, could be extras that I have that I throw in the box that I like, you know, um, could be remnants of really pretty ribbon or things that are difficult to find. You see how rustic that looks? I absolutely love it. So now we're moving up to the top and I have popped the top up and I'm going to very roughly put on some sheepskin white it's like a white off-white color that I put on the top of here I've dry brushed it on here and now I'm gonna go down each one of these cracks this was with a little um, I think this is like a a three pack or a four pack maybe of tools that you can get from Dollar Tree and then I'm gonna take my little sanding block here and I'm gonna sand it a little bit too just to make the surface smooth in case we have any um, raised areas. We don't want that. We want to be nice and smooth for this beautiful, beautiful wall decal. Y'all, this is a wall decal. Uh-huh. I got it from Timu. Again, not sponsored. But I got it from Timu, and I am loving using these. So beautiful. Look at this. I absolutely love everything on here. Everything. Every bit of it. Even the process of peeling this off the backing was beautiful. My table was nice and clean and painted and dust free and I am going to put down my decal. Now just take your time, be slow when you do this. You can pick it back up if you're very careful and slow and put it back down. Look how nice this smooths down with my hand. What I like about this type of look is the potential for it to look aged and hand painted. It's absolutely beautiful to me and in my head this turned out even better than I thought. It, it really did. I'm using my little squeegee or my scraper tool that came with my Mod Podge and I'm going to go down and wipe, oh, well I say wipe, scrape at it. It's not a hard thing. I don't want to cut into it like with anything metal. So I'm using this like a plastic type tool. I'm going all over it. You can use the old credit card, your driver's license, whatever. I'm going to just snip off the overhang here and then I will sand it down so it is nice and smooth to that edge. Y'all look, I need to do my roots. Okay, so I'm just using a, a little emery board here to get that sanded off, make it nice and smooth on the edge because again, I want it to look as though it's hand painted. Now I'm gonna take my razor and go right down here. You can use a box cutter, the side of your scissors, a utility blade, a rotary cutter, um, any a, a kitchen knife if you don't have anything else to go down once you put a decal on go down on any material that has slats in it if you want to make it look hand painted and cut through there and make it look as though it was actually painted on there because we'll be able to open it see that and sand it on the inside too every place that we cut you know we want to trim it down so you don't see any snags you want it to be nice and neat all those little extra details y'all really make things look so much better and, and well thought out. All right, once that's done and the whole table is dry, I'm going to be using some outdoor Mod Podge because I might want to put a plant on this. I might want to put a glass of tea on here, something that, might, that may sweat in the summertime. Well, you know it's going to sweat in Alabama. But I'm going to put this on here. This is thick. I wanted to show you the texture of it because it's not exactly the same as the regular Mod Podge, it is very thick. So I've just grabbed a sponge brush and I am putting it all over, not only the decal where it attaches to the table, but the entire tabletop, the edges, and then when I open the table, I also put it in between uh, the opening there, right down the middle. I'm trying to get the same amount of thickness all the way through. I'm gonna open the table so that it can dry. Moving right along. I'm going to use a green, a brown, and a yellow. I'm going to use sheepskin, not white, even though it shows that. I'm going to grab some ribbons. I'm going to use some stencil brushes and a bridge brush. And then from a stencil, I have two 
of these beautiful stencils that I'm going to be using. And I thrifted this little tin sign. It was already painted brown. I don't mind the brown. It's kind of dusty. It needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to grab my cleaner and spray it down. And then I'll just wipe it really well. Get any dust, any sticky, any anything on it. Clean it off. It's got some little holes in it right there. It must have had an applique of some type, maybe some little raised area. But I want to fill that in, so I'm just going to put a little tape on the back. And then I'm going to sand the front really well. I want to get some of the shiny off. I'm doing this before I put the paint over those holes so that I don't have, I'm not sanding off all the work I do. Then I'll just take a bridge brush and just put some brown right in there to make it a little less noticeable. But honestly, once we get the stencils on, you're not even going to know that's there. So I'm going to find the positioning that I like for my sunflowers, no particular measurements. If you don't have a tin sign, don't worry about it. Grab some signs from Dollar Tree, put two of them together, and stencil them on the back. You can certainly do that, make it easy for you. $2.50, right? Because I know not everybody has good thrift stores, so just use your imagination. We can definitely give the look of something being high quality if we take the time to do it. So I'm going to tape off the areas that I don't want to get paint on and I'm going to tape it off where nothing will move. I'm going to start with the center of the flower and yes the sign is brown and so is this paint. But you'll see the way that I put it on it's going to give it a quite a nice look I think. I'm going to cover the entire center of these two sunflowers with this brown. I'm just going in swirly motions and you'll see me just kind of dot it in some areas like on the outside where I don't want it to get on the petals because the stencil is kind of intricate. If I tried to tape off everything in between painting, I would be, there would never be time for anything to dry and you wouldn't be able to see the video. So you do what works best for you though. So now I've got both of the the centers of the flowers are brown. I'm going to use a little bit of jet black in the same brush that I had the brown on. I'm going to kind of mix those two together and right around the outside of that stencil I'm going to do almost like a outer ring that's going to be black. Now it's still in the center but it's going to be black. If you don't have sunflowers or that's not your thing, whatever stencil you have that you want to use, you can use on this. I love sunflowers. I think they are great for summer and going into fall. And even in fall, I do sunflowers in fall definitely. But I think this would look really good on my porch, so that's what I'm kind of going with. Again, make yours your own. Same motion here, and this is actually a sunflower yellow, and the brown was a chocolate brown and jet black. So I'm going to use circular motions here circle 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 all around those and you have to be careful you know you just you want to make sure that you use the least amount of paint as possible and if you have to layer it then you can layer it but if you put if you leave too much paint on your brush when you're offloading it's just going to go underneath the edges and muddy up your picture now there are some little places here where I actually did that and didn't do a very good job with straightening it out so I will go back and fix that I'll trace it out with a little of that chocolate brown and everything will look nice and crisp. And you can do the same thing. Now I'm going to take some of that sheepskin and I'm going to go all over where it says locally grown. Use any wording you want and you can leave the wording on, out if you want to. So I'm just going to go all over this area. I'm going to just do some pouncing with a little foam brush here. Just wanted to see if it made any difference turned out great. Chalk paint is so easy to stencil with, you know, just in my opinion. Now it's still wet, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Now the flowers are probably dry by now, but the locally grown is still wet. Here's what it looks like when you peel it off. I'm going to use my bridge brush, uh, one of the bridge brushes, and some of that same color and go over each of those areas. Now by bridge, I mean you actually close the gaps. So you can see when you have a stencil, the letters are open, but that's the way they do it so that it will attach to the plastic and keep the shape. 
Okay, so you see here how dark the green is. I'm adding some highlights. All I did was took my ivy green. I added a little bit of that sunflower yellow to it just to brighten it up a bit so that I could add highlights to the leaves because they really don't show up that much on that brown. But this works really nicely. I'm gonna add a little more of that brown and black together and pounce most of it off. It's mostly brown there. And I'm going to just dot it very gently over where it says locally grown after, of course, that it is dry. Because I don't want to drag that white paint. I want that paint to stay right where it is. This is to make it look a little more aged, as if it's been outside, pollen has gotten on it. You know, it's had the, the normal winds and the mud and the rain that splashed up on it. Because it's been outside, right? Maybe even hanging off the side of somebody's barn, hanging off the side of your house, under your porch, wherever and it just has some natural aging. Then I'm gonna take some yellow and I am gonna definitely take most of that off and I'm gonna dot that all over the sign. Again, a little aging, a little interest. It's gonna lighten it up just a bit. I'm gonna start with really light, light dabbing and then I'll get a little heavier as you can see here. Picking up a little more paint, getting a little more confident with it and putting it all around the sign. Now, the brown paint that I had I went around each of the yellow petals to clean that up and around the green sections to get it nice and crisp. But, you know, again, you could probably avoid that whole thing by just making sure you don't put too much paint on there. Make very light layers and then work your way up. Love the look of it. Look how beautiful that black and brown looks in the middle of the flower. Really gave it some dimension. It's so nice. You can see the difference in the leaves. And you can see them a little bit now. So the top of my tin piece has these, it almost looks like ruffles or it gives it a little movement. And I thought, why don't we put some ribbon up there to look like, you know, a little movement with ribbon. So this beautiful, beautiful ribbon that I got on 90% off last year, I could not believe it, 90% off. And there was actually stuff still in the store and that never, ever happens to me. But 90% off. So I saved a lot of money. I spent like 50 cents on this beautiful ribbon and it matches perfectly and I think because it doesn't have leaves on it and because it doesn't have like green greenery and it doesn't have like the rust colors for fall that this ribbon is perfect for any time that you craft with a sunflower because it doesn't scream anything other than sunflower. I'm just going to push that down on there and use my fingers to run across and make sure that it is holding those curves that are underneath it. And then, of course, we're going to lock it in place with a little bit more. Now, I'm using that same outdoor Mod Podge. And I will tell you, too, the Mod Podge, the outdoor Mod Podge, will give it a shiny look. All you have to do is, after you use your Mod Podge and put as many layers as you're going to put on of your Mod Podge, you can use some um, polyurethane, use the water base so it doesn't yellow anything, and just go over your entire project, of course, once it is completely dried. There may, I know there's some uh, cure time for that Mod Podge as well. So just read your directions, make sure you're doing it right so nothing's falling apart midsummer at your house. Especially if you live in the South like we do. Now the top got the Mod Podge, but the back, I'm going to take the edge around the back with a little hot glue to hold it in place where there's a nice finished edge. So it looks like we got it from the store maybe. See, even, even so, your ribbon will move a little bit. So just pat it back down before you turn it around. Make sure everything's staying where it needs to. And I decided that the bottom needed a coordinating stripe. So I'm just going to take a brush that is a little bit thinner than the width of that ribbon. And I'm put it down into that Mod Podge. Press it into place. And then I will take another layer and go right over the top. This is gonna seal it in. Make it last a long time. And when it dries, it does get a little, a little more see-through, I guess you could say. It doesn't stay as crisp white, and I'm fine with that. Y'all look how these turned out. Oh my goodness. The chair is just out there for display purposes. I brought these in the yard so that you could see these outside. Look at the stunning table. I should have done a side-by-side -side because it doesn't look anything like it looked to begin with. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs and you've enjoyed these flips and creations, 
subscribe to the channel because you do not want to miss anything. Look at the lights. I should have shown you the lights at nighttime, but I didn't. But use your imagination. With all five bulbs lit up. Very pretty. It doesn't show a ton of light. It just gives a little bit of light, which is perfect for, you know, maybe a romantic evening on the porch. Who knows? A little drink, unwind at the end of the day, a little glass of tea. Perfection. Do you like these? I know I do. I really hope that you do. This is going to be a thrift flip. So I found this little box. Pretty sure there was a clock on the inside, but the back wasn't there and the insides weren't either. I'm gonna use a piece of floral foam or styrofoam and some white chalk paint and a brush. This is a little window cling and then a bunch of whatever flowers you choose. I'm gonna take this piece and paint it white. Now it's had a good scrubbing, so it's nice and clean. And now I'm just gonna take this chalk paint and make sure it's in all the cracks and all the grooves. I want it to have two coats of a nice full coverage and then we're going to distress it. You know, because I like my rustic farmhouse cottagey look. Once it is dry completely, I just dry brush the handle on the top. Then we'll move on to the next step. Now you can certainly spray paint the inside if you like, but it doesn't bother me, so I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna take a piece of this styrofoam and put it right on the inside and press it down onto the bottom. I want it to be close to level with the, um, the opening on the front so that I can put my flowers in there and you'll be able to see them. I'm gonna trim everything down so that it fits inside the box where we can see it in the front. And I'm kind of just putting in, putting those in in just like a little angle, but you can do it any way you want to. Um, if you have an old clock at the house that doesn't work anymore, you can just gut it, take the stuff out of it, and you can make something pretty with it. And I know um, you can find things like this, this at lots of thrift stores, so you might be able to find something if this is inspiring you to make one of your own. Now, I'm just gonna pull these flowers around. They're on wire, so they're easily trimmed down and movable, and I can position them exactly where I want them. You can also use a little hot glue to, you know, maybe stick the petals down on the outside if you need a little more control. So I'm just gonna continue to fluff around here till I get it how I like it. Now I'm gonna distress it. You can do your distressing first if you would like, but um, I got excited about my flowers, so I went ahead and did that first. You can use a sanding block like this. You can use a piece of sanding paper if you would like. You can use probably a steel wool, a wire brush, anything that you want to distress your piece. And if you don't wanna do this, you could also use some type of an antiquing wax if you would like to do that. So for the smaller areas, I'm just gonna use this paper and I've just got this uh, folded kind of to a point and I'm using the point of it to go around the edges and the ridges. I'm going to do that on the top. You can see how I'm distressing it here. I want to take a minute to thank Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I was part of her Spotlight Saturday Challenge and I have some videos over there on her channel which I will link below so you can go check it out over there. Thank you Sammy so much. I really enjoyed it. So now to put the window cling down, I'm just going to use a little bit of my glue stick, rub it in with my finger a little bit, and then place this piece down. You can trim these pieces up too, if you need to. And you can write this if you wanted to write it, or you could leave it off altogether if you like. It's almost like it says, hello summer, or hello sunshine, with those pretty little yellow and white flowers. So I like the way that looks. I always check my pieces out to see what else do I want to add, does it need anything else, and in this situation I feel like it needs a little something else. But you can leave it off if you want. I'm just going to make a little swag to go on the top, and I'm using some more of the pieces that coordinate with what was on the inside of the box, and I'm going to place those down here until I get the shape and the look that I like, and I'm going to take a little of this florist wire and this little it comes on a little paddle. I'm going to kind of wrap it around there. And then 
get it nice and twisted so everything stays together in the middle. You can also use like um, pipe cleaners if you wanted to for this or a twist tie. You could also use zip ties, whatever you want to use. Now I'm going to make my bow and I have this beautiful linen and cotton blend striped piece of ribbon and it doesn't have any wire in it but that's not a concern. I'm going to measure seven inches because that looks like it's going to fit properly in the middle of that little swag and I'm just going to fold it over a few times on itself just like so so that I have even number of little loops on each side. I'll have two loops on the right and two loops on the left and then I'm just going to cut it off and we'll make a separate tail and that tail is going to be about 16 inches long. I'm just measuring it so 14 and 14 and then a little bit extra so 15 or 16 inches I guess you could say. I'm going to fold this over and dovetail the ends and this is going to be the tail for our bow. I'm going to just pinch it into the middle folding it over to make sure I'm you know pretty much in the center and I'm going to pinch that together using a piece of jute I'm going to wrap it around the middle place it down on the table and then give it a couple of knots and this is going to hold that pleat in the middle and keep our bow cinched in the middle and nice and shapely now you don't want to make a bow with a ribbon that doesn't have wire in it. You don't want to make your loops too big because it'll become too floppy and your little loops won't stand out on their own. But of course if you like that look then you just go right ahead and do that. We always want to make it our own. Now I'm just going to tie that right down on top and this is the back of our bow. Now it should stay in place fine. I'm going to reach onto the inside of that bow and pull the top layer up, the bottom layer down, and I'm just going to fluff that out. This is such a pretty ribbon and it just, it's very farmhouse to me, I think, with the neutral colors and the stripes. And then the pretty little wildflowers just make it rustic and cottagey. So I think it could be a combination for lots of different styles. I'm going to tie it right into the middle of our little swag here and then keeping those jute strings long I'm going to use that to wrap around the handle on the top. You know you could set this on your porch if you have a covered porch you could put it in your house and something like this to me would be so pretty to give to a friend to give to somebody who maybe needs a little bit of you know a little sunshine a little brightness in their day something like this would be so cute. Now you can go ahead and put a back on there if you want or put the backing back if you had yours originally. But I'm going to leave mine open so the light will shine through and you can see the little flowers better. I'm trimming up now. This is like my final look at it to make sure I have it the way I want it. And then you can just use a little bit of hot glue and glue down those little tails if you would like. just like that. These are also thrifted pieces. These are from a canning set. They came from Goodwill. And then I have a jar lid and I also have some of these old spoons. Now they all have quite a bit of wear on them and I love that they are already aged. We don't have to do any work. I'm also going to use a hammer, some type of a poking tool or a knife or a narrow screwdriver. We're going to use jute. I'm also going to use some beads which you will see later. I'm going to start off by deciding, I already know that I want the smallest little, um, I guess we're going to call it a funnel. So we're going to put the, the smallest funnel on top and we have to have a way to attach that to the one that's going to be underneath it. So I'm just making a hole and then I'm going to take the bigger one which is what you're looking at now. I'm going to mark it with my little chalk writer so we can put a bunch of holes in here so that our strings and our spoons will hang down from there. Y'all, it is storming outside, so if you hear the thunder, forgive me, I can't even get that out of the video. Okay, so see, I have all my markings here. I do go back and add one more behind where I just poked the first one. I do that later, and you'll see that shortly. 
So I'm just kind of drilling into here. You might want to put something underneath it so you don't make a hole in your table. I'm doing it as lightly as possible until I get in this angle. And then I just kind of screw it down a little bit. So you can see how we're going to attach it. Smallest on top, the larger one on the bottom, and then all these little spoons are going to hang down. So now I'm going to take my spoons apart. I'm just going to take this little jump ring and I'm going to put it right here on the large one and close it back up and I'm going to use a piece of jute and I'm just going to poke it through the hole on the bottom of the smaller funnel and I'm going to tie a few knots in here so that it doesn't slide down through the hole that I just made to feed that jute string through. Does that make sense? So see, we don't want that to go all the way through, so it needs to be big enough to hold it. And then I'm going to go through that ring on the bottom, and then just tie those together. And then I thought, you know what? Shortly, I'm going to do something a little bit different. You're, you're going to see shortly what I do. But you can do it like this if you don't have beads. All right, so here are all of our spoons. And I am just going to, you don't have to do this in any order, you know, you know what a wind chime looks like. They're hanging at kind of a variety of lengths. Some of them are all at the same length. However you want to do this is going to be absolutely fine as long as they can make contact with each other when the wind blows so that you get that little sound, the little chime sound. I'm going to cut my cords off a little bit longer than I'll need, but just to be sure that I have plenty, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer than I need. We can't add it back, right? But we can cut it off more if we need to. All right. Continue along. Do all your spoons that way. And then this little jar lid is going to be our, I don't know if you would call it like a clapper, kind of like in a bell. There's a clapper in the middle. So I don't know if that's what you want to call that or not, but we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to poke a hole in it and we're going to tie knots to hold it in place because this is going to be in the center of all of our spoons. It'll give something to hit against. So here are the beads that I've chosen. You can use whatever you want. I know you can get them at Dollar Tree. I just took that knot out. Now I'm going to retie it with the bead on it. And I'm going to tie it down shorter. You can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's easier just to watch than have somebody explain it, isn't it? Okay, so you get the idea here. Now we can trim off what we don't need and get rid of that. And this is how that section is going to look. And then I'm going to add a bead to each one of the spoons like this, trimming off what we don't need to make it look nice and neat. And then adding a little bit of hot glue on the string above the knot. This is going to keep the bead from moving around and it's also going to keep your knot from coming undone. Keep in mind, if you're doing this outside, you're going to want to use Gorilla Glue or you're going to use some type of E6000 or something like that to hold everything in place because the heat on regular hot glue will cause it to melt. It's just like a silicone, something like that. Um, I don't know what hot glue is made out of, but um, yeah, it just releases in the heat. So you, you want to be sure that you uh, prevent that from happening with your wind chimes. You don't want them to fall apart. So now I've added one bead here and I'm going to make a same process, going to trim off what we don't need and slide that bead down and I'm going to add more beads onto this strand. So I'm going to tie a few knots and I'm going to slide the knot as close as I can down to the bead and I'll do that process with each one of these so that there's a little space in between there. And I think it looks nice. Do this however you want. If you want your beads to be right on top of each other, you can do that. Just keep on going down. Okay, so now that we got all those beads on there the way we want them, feed it through and I put it through the middle hole there. And I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to add another knot on the top of that so that it doesn't slide through. 
and you can make this as long or as short as you want to. A little glue here underneath the knot is going to hold that in place and when we trim it down it's going to keep it from coming apart or fraying. Now I'm just putting a little bit of cool temperature glue on here and twisting it. Now I have a point so I can easily feed that jute up through there. You know sometimes jute will fray and it's hard to kind of push the beads and everything through there. You can just use a little bit of hot glue or a little piece of clear tape and you won't have any problem with it. So for each one of these pieces of jute with the spoon on it, I'm going to pull up through there. And then once I get them all pulled through, I'm going to decide how long I want the strings to be. This is kind of a process of holding the strings, lifting it up, looking at it, moving the length down, tying your knot. It doesn't take a long time to do it. It's just, you know, it's just part of it, but I think that it's worth it. Continue along just like this. And then once you get all of your spoons tied on and the little clapper in the middle, you can go through there and trim off whatever you don't want. You can shorten up anything you want to shorten up, which is kind of what I'm looking at here, how long I want those to be. And then trim off and add your glue to each of those little sections underneath the knot. This one needs to be a little shorter, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's easy to do. All right, so just finalizing all of these to make sure nothing comes loose. If you had a little bird that you wanted to put in here or a little nest, that would be super cute in that second funnel. But for me, I'm just going to add a little jute bow. I'm just wrapping it around my fingers about mm, probably 10 times and then cut it off. These are going to be the little loops of our bow. I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to cut. I think I have three or four strands that are about 12 inches long and this is going to be the tails. You can use some type of ribbon here. You can use a little, little florals here. You can use anything you want in there, or you could just leave it where the knots are showing. You could add more beads in, whatever. Use your imagination. What would you put in there? Now, all I'm doing with these little, what's gonna be our tails, is just tying them right around the middle of that little bundle of jute, and then pulling them down so that the tails will hang down underneath it. And then all you have to do is just fluff out the little loops there to make it a cute little fluffy little bow. I'm going to add that right in the center of where all those knots are and it'll just hang down and when the wind blows it'll give it a little more interest. Maybe catch the wind and spin it a little more. I love wind chimes. My husband's not a big fan but I love them. I like to wake up in the morning and know if it's windy or breezy outside. I can hear it through my the double doors in my room. I really like it. Plus we live in a tornado prone zone. We're going to use some floral foam and some more jute. I also have two strainer baskets. They have handles on them. They are the exact same thing and they are aged. They're about 10 inches. I am going to cut off a section of my jute and take the bottom of that strainer of one of them, pull it up, going to make a nice thick fat knot with a couple of loops in it right in the center of one of these baskets. I don't want anything slipping out and it's going to be kind of heavy after we add our florals to it so you want to be sure that you make that nice and thick. You could also tie a, a metal washer on there if you wanted to just to be on the safe side. I'm going to take the handle of the other basket and I'm going to wrap it around the handle and tie it up close underneath and then cut it off. You can see how it works here. You can add glue under there if you would like to. You see how it's going to look? All 
All right, so we're gonna start off with the bottom section. I'm gonna cut some scrap paper. Since this has holes in the bottom, and we obviously do not need holes in the bottom if we're using faux greenery, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of hot glue. This is on my cool temp setting. And I'm going to place this down in that basket. Lift it up so I don't glue it to my table. And this will give us something that we can glue down the foam, the styrofoam to, and help hold it in place. We're gonna do the same thing to the top section. I saved the backings to my stickers and all sorts of things, so I have little scraps of paper all over my table. All right, I'm going to add some glue here and then just put that glued section right on top of the paper. And do the same thing with the top. This is part of a hula skirt. I'm just going to use that, tuck it around my foam here, and then start adding in my plants. These are thrifted florals. This is a really pretty type of greenery. I love this. And I'm just going to add a few pieces. I only have three of them, so I'm trying to balance it because um, these pieces need to be balanced with your florals so that they don't fall to one side or the other you know you'll get what i'm saying when you see the end screen when i show you all the pieces final finally done all right so then i'm going to add some ivy you can add any type of scraps anything that you have the idea in my opinion is to put the pieces that are going to hang down or what you would call the spillers you would want those on the bottom most likely because you can't put too much height because the bottom of the top basket will hit it so the things that are gonna stick up, we can put on the top, just like this. If you don't like the ones I'm using, that's totally fine, just use what you have. I know that um, what you won't see into the end screen is that I did add some succulents in there, just here and there to just really fill it out and give it a little more interest. So just continue along until you have your baskets full. I'm going to use four little houses in two different sizes some wooden letters that say home this beautiful wall sticker from dollar tree some white linen chalk paint this is a thrifted little sign i'm also going to use some pavement paint i'm going to use some sanding pieces some tint and some brushes I'm going to start off by sanding this down. You can use a sanding block or you can sand it by hand. I did take these outside just to make it quicker and use my hand sander. And I got all over the surfaces because they're kind of splintery. I'm going to use some of this beautiful wood tint and I'm going to rub this all over. It did not stain my hands. I washed as soon as I got done and it came off my nails and my fingers perfectly. So yay, yay, yay. Love it. I'm gonna do this all over the entire thing. If you would rather paint your pieces, you can certainly do that. But I love this stain. You could also use your Waverly Wax if you wanted to, except that I'm not sure it would stick very well. Um, I'm not sure if it would stick very well to the window cling later, or the wall cling, excuse me. All right, now we're gonna be painting these because they're not all the same color and I want them white. I'm just adding a little hot glue down to a placemat so they don't move around while I paint them. And I love that idea because I'm not getting chalk paint all over my hands and then fingerprints all over my letters. So I'm just going to go all over the tops and the sides and all around. I'm showing you that I'm doing coating the entire thing and I do give these two coats of chalk paint. Once they're dry, I'm going to distress them with a chippy brush and a little bit of my antiquing wax. And I'm just going to tap that out so most of it is off of there. I want a really dry brush to do this. I don't like my distressing to look muddy. I like it to just look like it's kind of aged. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm dragging that across the surface so that it hits on all of those edges. You can see here in this close-up that it's getting on the edges, and that's the look I am going for. Once I've done that, I'm going to set them aside and let them dry. 
I'm going to cut down my pieces of this wall sign into the same measurements as the houses. I'm going to cut them down with my rotary cutter and my metal ruler. just makes it easier. And it's a lot easier to cut it when they're still on their backing than trying to cut them after you've peeled them off. I'm going to take some of my Mod Podge, put it down on the first house, and I'm just going to kind of work in order here. I'm going to start with the end of the sign or the um, the wall cling, the wall sticker, and put that down and then cover it with Mod Podge and then move on to the next one and do the same thing. And then my Mod Podge, they are adhesive on the back, these wall stickers, obviously they're stickers, but they're not going to stick down. Um, they're not going to stick for very long, so using some Mod Podge is going to seal that in and really keep it in place. So here they are, and it's time to let them dry. Once they're dry, fit the pieces back together, and look how gorgeous this is. Very pretty. Now I know that I want to add my letters across here. And this is how they're going to look. I'm just going to kind of measure up, and I know that I want them all to be about the same measurement up. So I just use my metal ruler to go through here and measure them and make sure that they are all in the same spots. Very easy. All right, now I'm gonna take that pavement acrylic paint. I'm gonna add that onto this black sign. It's a almost like a slate gray color. I really like this color compared to just a black, dark black. So I'm using that here. I'm gonna paint it on all surfaces. Get a nice, good coat. And then once it's dry, I'm going to start distressing it. I'm gonna go over all of the edges like this. On each of the ledges, on each of the corners, I'm going to distress this down. And this is how it's going to look. And this is going to be the base of our sign. So when I figure out what my center is, I'm going to start working to hot glue each of these pieces down to my sign. If you want to have something more permanent, grab your wood glue and use that here as well. I'm going to work from the end and I have it at this angle because I can see that it is the same distance from the front and the back so that it is centered in the sign. I'm going to continue along, lining these up, making them nice and neat, and try not to make a mess with your glue. Make sure that it's kind of in the center of your block so that it doesn't squish out everywhere. We want this to look high end. Okay, so once that is down, I just thought it would be cute to add a couple of greenery picks that look like the greenery in the sticker right to the top of the sign. And these look very, very similar. I'm going to use a little hot glue here and just shoot it right down that chimney. And that's going to hold that all in place. And this is how that sign is going to look. So here is the final look of our four projects. Here's our hanging basket. You can see where I added the, um, the extra greenery to it. And then over here is our beautiful wind chime. We have a little bit of a breeze, but it's very hot today. Very hot. I believe in you. I know that we all have a little bit of craftiness and creativity within us. And I don't say that you should do everything like I do it. Do it however you like it. Make it your own. That's what this channel is all about. Thank you so much for stopping wood was by. destined for the garbage pile. It was actually next to the burn pile and I pulled it away from the tree so I could bring it in and use it and apparently knock my table over in the process. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of dirty, scuffed up. I went ahead and wrote down 57 inches so you'll know how long this is. I didn't trim it down. It's exactly as it is when I pulled it. I'm going to use some walnut wood tint. This does not have any smell at all. It doesn't stink. It doesn't stain. It's great. 
well it stains your wood projects but you know so I took it outside and used my sander on it my electric sander and then brought it back in wiped it off get all the little dust off and then now I'm just taking an old terry cloth rag here you know you can keep your old towels and just tear them into shreds and they're really good for staining and cleaning your craft projects and save a little money that way so you could just go ahead and put as much as you need as much as you like for whatever coverage that you desire you might could use antiquing wax but I'm not entirely sure because things don't like to stick to it very well so I've gone over to my Cricut and I'm cutting out the letters for the word harvest I've already measured everything this is not like a Cricut tutorial video just letting you know I'm not a pro so I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step on a Cricut but there are plenty of crafters who know exactly what they're doing you probably want to go to them for those tutorials moving along I am going to remove or weed all of the extras off and you see the little pick in my hand that actually comes from Dollar Tree and I really like it so I am going to now that it's all weeded I'm going to take a piece of contact paper that I got from Dollar Tree I'm just gonna lay this on top and I'm gonna use this to lift my letter off without tearing my letters so I am transferring it this is like a transfer tape if you will I'm gonna place it down here on the wood and I'm not gonna press it all the way down yet I'm gonna measure and see how far down it is if it's where I like it and that's what you see me doing here and then I'm gonna move it down just a little because I need a little space on the top for extra embellishing and I'm just measuring here on the sides as well so that it is centered and then once it is I can press it down with my hands and then get some type of a tool and or squeegee and then go ahead and press this down into place this vinyl that I'm using I thrifted it it is awful it is awful for vinyl projects but it is great for stenciling because it peels up very easily ta-da my first one okay so now here it is with all of the letters in place I've used about there's like an inch of space in between each letter there so I have a nice gap then I'm gonna take some of my plaster chalk paint and go over the top I'm lightly going over the letters so that I don't go under because I didn't seal and then I'm gonna go heavier over after that then you can just peel off you can see how that was tearing and then this is what it looks like and I love it love it love that dark wood showing underneath okay so you can get these packs of little wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree um, harvest DIY words very good value because there's six in there and you can use these to embellish your projects I'm gonna use this on the top of my sign and I'm just going to stain it with the same stain like the, oh look what I did oh it's so frustrating they are so fragile y'all but look I'm just gonna keep going I'm rolling with it just keep on going cuz we can fix it we can fix it oh okay so I'm gonna use a little bit of my wood glue here and I'm going to be gluing this down I've already glued down the two F's and I'm going to glue down the rest of the word right next to it so that it is exactly where I want it to be wiping off my extra wood glue I'm just gonna stick it back together see no need to throw and it here away. is our leaner that we sold for $20 okay so it says harvest very simple the bottom is open and that is intentional because I want to have that down there where it will still be seen you can see the word above the pumpkins that I will be stacking around it thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel you mean the world to me and welcome again to all of the people who are new here see you again soon